want to welcome Dominic to this uh, webinar, knowing that it's quite late in Australia. <laughs> and um, just a little bit about uh, Dominic. He is a business leader and he has over 15 years of experience across the banking and finance, information technology and digital infrastructure industries. And he has lived and worked extensively in Hong Kong, Philippines, and is currently based in Australia. In fact, I think he is returning to Australia. Yeah? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. He specializes in leading culturally diverse teams. I can attest to that. In high growth environments, I can also attest to that. Um, and is actively shaping the sales strategy, business planning, territorial planning, including the adoption of operational cadence across the board. So busy man. <laughs> His current remit sees him interconnecting industry players from so such a wide range, right? Finance, manufacturing, retail, transportation, government, healthcare, education sectors into an expanding digital first world infrastructure setup. Wow, he's really in the forefront. And, and I actually talked to Dominic, you know, quite some time back. So thank you for carving this time out. The thing I want to hear from Dominic was, what are some of the work values that have helped you individually in your transition, your own career transition? So having seen that you have moved from country to country and then position to position as well. So there must be something in him that he has demonstrated, you know, that his employers ever so quickly plug and play and just plong him somewhere and everywhere. Yep. So, yeah. um, okay. So I thought to kick off, to maybe tell us about your career journey, the roles, the companies that you have worked for. All right. Hi everyone. Uh, Dominic, nice to meet you all from uh, Sydney, Australia, where it's currently a little bit before 5 p.m., but it's okay. It's, it's, uh, it's something that I like to do. And this is something, it's a passion of mine. Uh, to give back, right? Eileen and I have spoken about it. So to, my, my work experience is quite, um, I would say, interesting. If you ask me when I started my career, if I'll be here today, I'll definitely say, you got to be crazy. This is no way you're going to end up. All right. Um, so a little bit about me as well. Actually, I am from Singapore, uh, um, but I migrated to Australia when I was young. And I saw somebody in the comments in there saying that we're not brought up to be um, thought workers or something like that. Um, brought up to be risk takers. I uh, yeah. Will, right. yeah, we'll talk to that in a, in a bit as well. Um, so I have had the opportunity to have a foundation of the Singapore uh, upbringing and then mixed in with uh, high school and university and sort of early career start off in Sydney, Australia before embarking on um, my international journey, as Eileen would say it. So where I am today is in regional sales planning and strategy for Aquinix. If I told you that my first job was selling ice creams, you wouldn't believe me. And my second job after that was working in Pizza Hut, uh, making pizzas. <laughs> uh, how did I get here? So I always look at life in a certain way, and this is connecting to your values, is to me is a level of curiosity and passion, right? Um, so I started, why I went into Pizza Hut, let's not worry about the ice cream one, <laughs> that's just to make pocket money on the side, but it was something about making food. Um, I'm coming from Singapore, my parent, my mom cooks food, and it's something that just carries on in the household. Uh, so for me, I also wanted to learn something different besides Chinese food and Singaporean food. So I went away to learn something different, worked in Pizza Hut part-time uh, during high school and learned from there. Uh, fast forward a few hospitality jobs. I then got myself into university and then found myself curious about jobs that involve things that impact our everyday life. And I found myself going you know what, there's very few things in our life that impacts us every day, and that's banking and finances. So I was curious about it, and that's a value of mine. I'm curious as always. And I went in to have a job in the bank as a retail. So the similarity uh, job would be DBS in Singapore. Um, I was working in a retail branch, helping people with their savings and deposits, understanding things like that. So managing your finances. That then carried through to my, I would say my longest employer. Uh, from there, I, I got a, a, a 
a sort of a sniff of financial data. And I wanted to go work in an area that a job that allowed me to look at data, a research based stuff, right? Um, and that's how I found myself at Reuters, which is now known as uh, Refinitiv, where Aileen and I met actually. So I started as a customer service role in Reuters, helping banks understand financial data that pulled upon my customer service experience working in the banks, working in hospitality, uh, things like that. And I had a very service first orientated uh, mantra, as you would, as Eileen would say, it's a mantra that I still carry through today uh, as, as in, um, in how I do work. Then opportunities presented itself to move into a learning role, a learning and learning development. And as I can attest to what Eileen said earlier, you can teach anyone technical skills, but you can't teach them soft skills. Uh, so that really, that time in working in a learning and development role really crystallized what was a hidden passion of mine. And that was to empower others. Empowering others means different things to different people at different stages of their career. Um, as a manager or a leader, empowering others means giving autonomy to your team, giving uh, control to your team to do the job. But for me in learning development, and just like Eileen here as uh, hosting the session, empowering you as a participant is giving you, sharing with you knowledge to empower you to take action and go forward and help solve a, a question in life or solve a question in front uh, of a customer or your job. And that's, you know, that was a really good, uh, time I enjoyed uh, doing that role for two years, or oh, sorry, two plus three years, which took me to Manila. Uh, and I actually spent more time with Eileen and her team uh, building a very strong foundational team in Manila to expand uh, the company's presence at that time in APAC. Um, so that was, that was a really good journey. And I continue to look back at that journey with fond memories. Then about Right after Manila, I came back to Australia after two years in Philippines, came back to Australia for a few months. And next thing I knew there was an opportunity to move to Hong Kong, uh, pack the bags. I told the wife, let's go for a few years, give it a try. Let's broaden our minds, be curious, go out there and learn something different. Um, and my Cantonese is not great still after 12 years. <laughs> you didn't order the wrong food. No, no, my, my towel fund is still okay. okay. <laughs> um, so that took us to Hong Kong for two, like I said, for two years, but we ended up spending uh, pretty much 12 years and recently moved back to uh, Sydney, Australia. And the opportunities that presented me in, whilst in Hong Kong was something that I could never have thought of. And I'll, and probably in questions that I get from Eileen later, we'll touch upon it but it led me to move from a learning role into a project role, into a business planning role um, that allowed me to go across the world, fly to London, spend a lot of time in London, spend a lot of time in New York, uh, cover the region, have a great amount of responsibility that I've never thought of when I started working at Pizza Hut or Ice Cream Cellar, and led me to where I am today, which is staying in a business planning type role, strategy role, uh, that it has cut across, allowed me to experience so many different cultures and so many different types of individuals of background uh, experiences and just learning how to work with them to leverage their capabilities and their passions. It's very nice. And how long were you in Hong Kong? Uh, almost 12 years. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. That's a long time. You got a question in the chat though. Uh, do yes. you think... Do you think the opportunities would be different if you didn't migrate to Australia? Had you stayed on here? Yes, uh, that's a good question, Eric. Uh, yeah. Very thought-provoking questions. Again, I don't think I don't think many economists or even uh, long-term planners view that Singapore would get the growth injection of companies as it did today. Actually, to fast forward my question, my statement is that being in Singapore right now is the best place to be. Mm. To have the opportunity with the number of companies, international companies and the growth of local companies from Singapore as a hub for APAC, it is an unbelievable place. And Eileen and I traded lots of conversations about that 
yeah. uh, recently when we met up after a long time. So it would have been a different level of different set of opportunities that presented to me uh, by migrating to Australia. But nonetheless, by being in Singapore is actually where you want to be. Me being not in Singapore is actually me missing out uh, on opportunities right now, actually. <laughs> but for personal reasons and family, I've moved back here. Yeah, I think I think apart from that, there's also regional headquarters for global firms, right? Yes. And typically, yes. either Hong Kong, Singapore uh, are selected. You know, I'm just casting our minds way back then, you know. And then, of course, now there are other regional hubs that have, you know, sprouted over the decades. Yeah. Exactly, so, exactly. Uh, mm, I think right. Ed Eddie has got, uh, that's another yes. question there, quite, quite a nice related question. How to get selected for overseas roles? Uh, yeah. <laughs> your, your perspective, you to... <laughs> your perspective. <laughs> okay. Um, so I think there's two answers to this, uh, Eddie. There is the external answer. Like when I say external is that you're applying to an, a job externally for the first time to get posted overseas. And then there's the answer to how do you get uh, selected for an overseas role when you're internally in the company. Okay, mm -hmm. so let me answer that question with the internal view first. Uh, number one, which is something that I didn't learn till uh, I saw the results, which is speak up and just let people know. Uh, I know there is, personally, it's our culture and also I feel that way as well. It's a bit shy about letting people know what my preferences are, where I want to go, because uh, it might put me, in, people might view me differently if I said this or said that. But Nonetheless, put your hand up and say that I'm open to an opportunity to be overseas, explore things, and don't always think about it as an upwards move to go uh, overseas. Think about it as a horizontal move or even a sort of a diagonal move to get to where you want to get to in, you know, two roles time in five years time, right? From then from an external perspective, that one's a lot more challenging for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you definitely need to, if you're applying externally in from external into the company, not working there, you're looking to be posted in another country. Um, you, it's a very challenging one. There's no right answer. So my view is that it really comes down to the person's capabilities. Uh, what it, first of all, like jumps off the paper, can this person do the job? You know, what is this person's passion? Why does this person want to go overseas? things like that. And then I would give a call and have a conversation and get to know you better to understand, you know, your, to hear from you why you want to go overseas and where you see yourself going forward from there. Mm. I, I, I yeah. like that a lot. And I'm just thinking, Eddie asked an app question and I thought we can make reference to this. Which one would you pick, you know, um, for if you were to select someone? Because I know Dominic, you you are managing a team, <laughs> regional <laughs> team, right? So so, what would you look for? Me, I would look for humanity, the social intelligence side. Ah, yeah. I mean, that's a level of soft skills that you really cannot pass on. Like the, these are how people are built and mm. so forth. But social intelligence will get you far mm. or in a company and in your role in life. Uh, humor, not so much. <laughs> as it <would> say. Serious? <laughs> oh no! There's no job for me! <laughs> but I'm curious, you know, Dominic, the first overseas assignment is always tough. Uh, tough meaning to say your career sponsor is taking a gamble on you. And mm -hmm. then how do you you know, um, by their confidence that you can do it. Maybe you want to flash back on your first experience. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know if I was being punished or rewarded at that time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's definitely a reward. Um, yeah. Uh, overseas uh, diplomas, and I'm just seeing the, the chat as well. Um, yes, LinkedIn does help. Uh, it wasn't link there was no LinkedIn back that, in those days anyway. Um, so how, looking back at it is establishing uh, a level of performance. You know, again, I'm speaking from an internal um, perspective that I was asked, would you be interested to go over to Philippines to do this for a period of time? And I also asked the question, why, you, why am I being getting asked? 
And the answer that came back was essentially along the lines of, you're doing a good job. You know, you've demonstrated that uh, you're looking to do something more mm. and there is potential in you to do a lot more, right? And so that kind of gave me a lot of encouragement and confidence to, well, not say confidence, but also pressure and expectation that when they say great potential to do more, it's like, wow, what do they know that I don't know about myself? Yeah. Uh, what do and they always, Yeah, we'll have that conversation from time, time to time. So that, to, back to my career sponsor at the time to kind of flush out what was the expectations, why was I being tapped? It all boiled down to the job that you're doing uh, and the trust that he or she has in you to not only deliver what is required, mm. but that you would see uh, benefits in going and learn through this journey as well. Okay. Mm. I think uh, we've got another question. Wow. Another question here. Is it better to have a team with diverse values or all having the same values like humanity? Huh? Let's hear from you. Uh, definitely a diverse uh, team of a team of diverse values and personalities right. and traits. Um, yes, that's that's the short answer. Yes, and that is the only answer that I live by as well. Yeah. Oh, tell me, tell me, tell me more about it. Why? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's uh, also again one of these um, learnings that I got from my previous managers as well is to always look ahead, right? Look ahead in terms of your work. I know that it's very easy to get bogged down in this session here and, you know, when the work is in front of us and answer this email. But by having diverse people or diverse views in the team, you get perspectives that one never thought about to look ahead. Mm. And things like that is is invaluable, right? Mm. Now, it's something that we all need to bring together and encourage more of and actually do more of rather than just saying saying the words taking action is the other thing um, so i do as much as i can to take the action uh, in encouraging individuals i worked with around the world to right. go into certain directions and be their career sponsor that someone else has been for me ah okay yeah. okay yeah. but i think ken ken has got a, a nice follow-up question uh, if diverse if a diverse uh, team is gonna add a lot of value to your team but then how then do you resolve conflict because oh. they are so diverse you know thinking very differently on two ends of the spectrum maybe not yeah. Ends, but yeah i mean to back up everyone's thing it's just sort of Think it from their perspective. I always yep. encourage, I, in a meeting room like this, and there's two different views, I don't try and side on either. I try and extract the, the underlying answers or the tone or the meaning behind their, their approach or mm. even their, their views by asking questions. So that way, the opposing side that is, you know, assumingly not receptive to the, to the input and feeling some conflict, we try and understand where they're coming from. Uh, and so forth. Um, I can speak fresh experience. I just got back from uh, the US two weeks ago and having sat in a room with very diverse group of individuals with very, very big responsibilities for the company. And we were, we were challenging each other and it's challenging. We have to build a level of maturity to challenge each other, mm -hmm. to understand each other's views. It's not conflict. Conflict is actually um, another way of saying friction. But having friction is good yeah. because that will draw out that diverse view, right, that we all talk about. And mm -hmm. then then I'm sure through that discussion, we actually go like, okay, I understand where you're coming from. Here's my counter proposal. And then it goes back and forth from there. So. It took about three days for me, uh, <laughs> but eventually we got there. Right. So, so question back to you, Eileen. Um, ah, back to and, me. <laughs> and it's also, I think, it's beneficial for um, our participants on this call. Yeah. When Do you think that when we go for employment opportunities, do we, how do we look at a company in terms of their growth stage and mm. their maturity in the market? Do you think that's, how do you think that impacts the type of values that they are looking for. Oh, very much, very much, yeah. So 
um, always divide the company into three phases. So one is what we call business as usual. So business as usual, they probably already operating at market level and um, establish presence. And then there are those who are in a growth stage where they try to trailblaze, either trailblaze or they are in a race to, to actually reinvent the market or, or open new markets, so to speak. So they are at the top tier. And then the lower tier are those who are still struggling. That means I've just established my presence or, or I've been in the market for a while, but I still can't quite bring it to market level. So, so uh, you know, mentally, I think of these three layers and I really would emphasize a lot on bravery for the top tier, you know, really take a lot of risks. Um, and, and like I said, the nature of the work as well. If I want to know what's happening on the ground, I wouldn't want someone, you know, the initial team to fudge information. So yeah, I, I will also look at honesty. <laughs> so many ways of playing this. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's a long answer to your question. Yeah, no, it's, it's a good, I think it's a worthwhile one to explore because uh, coming back to um, earlier Eddie's question about being in Singapore, not in Singapore, I th the stage of Singapore's current growth and economic like mm. company growth over the next few years, you have to be quite uh, diligent in the companies you're targeting to to apply for your job. So if to your point is that mm. uh, if they're in a the growth stage, they would be looking at different values. They will rank it differently if they're in the established stage, different types of values. So it's something to be something just to think about because uh, I think about that as well when I put myself out there to go like, hey, do I want to apply for this job at this company? Am I the right fit? Mm. Things like that. Um, but not to plug my company at this stage, but um, uh, we do we are in a growth stage in Singapore. We do have a number of roles open. So uh, please do go check out equinix.com uh, on the career website. And we do provide um, a good amount of support to career people with career change as well. Nice. So nice. What a nugget of gold you just threw out like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I did not plan that. You know I didn't plan that. <laughs> I know, I know you didn't plan that. Yeah, you 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 came in very, with open arms and say, yeah, okay, fine. Ask me anything. But thank you so much for that. But that's not all. I, I, I have a few more questions. To yes, ask. please go ahead. Yeah, I, I think the next one I wanted to know is, I know you have built regional teams. And I really want to know what are some of, have you have actually spotted someone who has, who is not part of your team, but demonstrate certain values that you, you kind of have a feel like this is, this is the kind of work value that I want. Have you ever come across that kind of situation? Oh, definitely. Um, every day. I mean, I mean, you and I, when we were working together, we had the hmm. absolute pleasure of meeting such amount of people. Uh, I hope I'm in that category for you because you are for, <laughs> for me. sure. <laughs> um, That's why we're still um, in touch after so many yeah. years. Yeah. Uh, funny enough, I reconnected with an ex-colleague last night uh, over dinner. Okay. Um, my wife came along as well and it was just good to sync up. And my wife just goes like, you know, why didn't you just hire him into your team? I'm like, I, I wish I could. We definitely, I've definitely come across a lot of people like that. Um, Again, different different kind of um, situations come up with that. But the way I've seen them operate, how they do their job, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's like how you do you deliver your business as usual performance, how you deliver your deliverables and your outputs, uh, brands you as what kind of person that you would get trustworthy, capable, potential, mm -hmm. and all that. And that's the kind of things that you, you look out for. Um, so, so what did you like about that person that you saw that, that even caused your, uh, your wife it's, to bring I, that I think, I think this person rates very highly on bravery, uh, sensibility, mm -hmm. and just tenacity uh, to do just to get a job mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, my previous world or my previous jobs uh, roles, he wouldn't have been, he wouldn't be a relevant person uh, fit in my team in terms of experience, values and all that. But now for what I'm looking for, he's someone that is right uh, for my side of the, the things, uh, but he's it, doing it, something it, really. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> so, so rude. Um, is that for individual contributor role or is that a people leader role? Ah, it's, it's, a, it's a good uh. question. Uh, currently it's an individual contributor. Um, okay. 
Okay. Now, one of the things that I always like to do, um, you and I talked about it, is succession yeah. planning, right? I know yeah. we're diverging a little bit, but I like to see someone come into a role and mm-hmm. but know that they are too good for that role in a year's time or maybe even a year's too aggressive, uh, more like a year and a half, two years. So I see that they can basically exceed that job in two years and be moving on to something else soon after. Uh, so I see this person, if he does come in, I he would do this for two years, but be on to something else soon after. Yeah. So it's interesting to to hear from you when you said bravery is the one that you're, you're, you're looking at, right? The courage to actually uh, take on maybe new challenges or something like that. You can see here. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's, yeah. that's very good. But I, I remember earlier on, you mentioned about social intelligence in terms mm. of taking on a position overseas. Mm. Yeah. Um, there's a question from the floor. What roles are you throwing out? <laughs> <For equipment? laughs> okay. Uh, first of all, uh, yes, our company address technically is Ayaraja, but we have an office. It's actually now on Robinson Road in yeah. Tanjung Baga. Uh, so it's opposite, is the new building there by Capital Lab. Yeah, it's very central, just outside the Tantra Baga MRT. Uh, it's very, very central. Uh, what roles am I trying out there? We have a whole bunch of roles uh, between uh, technical roles to work in a, in a data center and we'll teach you how to, we have a lot of entry level roles uh, and so forth, uh, through the sales roles, through the sales admin roles, through to um, operational roles. So we do have a, a wide range of roles. Uh, and let's not forget finance, HR, legal. Corporate uh, functions legal. as well. Yes, group functions as well. So mm-hmm. Singapore is our main hub now, as I mentioned. You know, mm-hmm. Singapore is a growing hub. There's a lot of opportunities there. Uh, mm-hmm. So have a look and see if anything uh, tickles your fancy. Uh, I will say, I don't know if this is dumping out of, out of sync and order and answering questions. Aquinix has, what attracted me to Aquinix is a couple of things. Number one is the growth industry where it's in and it's the leading company. Right. But the the second thing is it already has an established uh, culture, work culture and values. It's on our website. Uh, We have eight of them and I encourage you to go have a look because it's very much so like what we've talked about today uh, so far in the session. And if you can relate to those, uh, then you'll be a great addition to um, a company. And oh, again, okay. second plug I did not plan for. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed, indeed, yeah. Um, so can I can I be so brave to ask you, can you name me one of your corporate culture uh, value? Yes. Uh, so we have eight of them, and I have cheating me on the front screen here. Um, but the one that always stands out when anyone asks me is mm. this t- this phrase of, put me before, sorry, put we before me. So that means thinking beyond yourself, thinking as a larger group, thinking as a whole, Um, because that way you would win as you're trying to do the right thing. You're trying to do, establish, um, basically gain conviction and approval for something that's just bigger than yourself. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm sure we all have families. I'm sure as growing up, you wanted to go to uh, to have to go in a certain direction, but that just defeats the purpose of every, the whole family going somewhere else. So that's an example whereby a decision has to be made that you know we do make a decision that satisfies more than just yourself. Mm. Things like that. Mm. Yeah. Team before self. <laughs> yeah. Team goes. Team goes. I see. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, so then, how do you look for people with that that demonstrate that? And this is where, again, in a, in a question interview environment, uh, we just mm, ask the very typical uh, ex- interview questions of explain a scenario where you've had to put yourself aside and, and share where you overcome uh, a challenge or a scenario that put yourself as the second or maybe even third or even far for, fourth or even last priority in the decision making, right? Putting yourself out there on risk. Mm. And that's one way of doing it. Okay. But the way I most enjoy to get an answer is to ask about, uh, ask a question outside of work. It's like describe what you do for fun and explain where you had to, again, make a decision that was more than yourself. 
Okay. I really like that. Yeah, I really a very, like very that. classic example is where do we go to eat dinner? And that's a very diverse, you know, array of answers that come back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, asking questions that do not, that are not prescribed, right, really does reveal a certain aspect of the individual. Um, okay, thanks so much. I have one more question. And the question mm. is actually, I mean, that's from me. Eh? So, so I'm thinking about, are there certain values that sometimes professionals, you know, unconsciously exhibit that they need to be a bit more mindful of that is, unfavorable uh like watch yourself when you <laughs> okay so You're giving away okay. your secret <laughs> no it's not, it's not secrets it's just more like what do you everyone has pet peeves or pet hates yeah yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. but in a professional environment there are some very common things that we should all be uh staying away from uh mm. number one is in you know in an environment where most companies have positive values, work values, and so forth, is be confrontational. So don't be confrontational, actually, is what I'm saying. Uh, we all have to control ourselves from time to time. I think a lot of people will always say, if you ever want to send in a complaint, write a complaint, but don't send it. Because <laughs> mm. that, that, that takes, you know, you're saying you want to get it off your chest. It's off your chest. Don't send it. Uh, in a workplace environment, is the last thing you want to do is be confrontational. That's not a good value to demonstrate. Uh, even though you're very passionate about what is being said is not aligning with your views and your beliefs, you need to find a way to um, discuss it in a more productive and constructive manner. I like uh, that. Yeah. Things like that. Um, in terms of... Mm turning up to work every day as well as how you present yourself. Mm -hmm. That's also a value that's very important. How you present yourself is something that goes beyond how, what kind of deliverable you do. How people see you is very important as well. Um, so I'm not saying turn up at 9 a.m. on the dot and leave only at 6 p.m. or when the manager leaves. It's just how you bring yourself to work every day how you bring your energy to the office as well, things like that. Energy, yeah. Yeah. Working hours, energy, how you, anything else? <laughs> Always bring a smile. Always bring a smile <laughs> if you can. Mm. Be, be, be a positive person in the office. And um, there, if you are a negative person in whatever way or manner, but if you're just deemed as negative, uh, people would not want to work with you and you would create a very unconscious bias very quickly already. Like, oh, so-and-so said this, ah, don't worry about that. So mm -hmm. that's the other thing that you want to uh, steer away from. And I mentioned unconscious bias. Is it something that yeah. you talked about in previous series or not yet? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. In, okay, in, then. In, yeah, for sure. In a different but more HR forum where we yeah. try to teach uh, leaders not to jump into conclusion and stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> okay, Linda, I'm going to ask your question. <laughs> what do you think about people who talk too fast? Is it good or bad? <laughs> Dominic? Wow. I, I've been told that I talk too fast. So I actually I, I, am mindful to try to talk slower when I present. I can tell. <laughs> yeah. Um, I hope I haven't spoken too fast. Uh, it's not a good or a bad thing at all. Um, it's just, again, different cultures have different ter speeds of speaking. Um, okay. And if you don't understand somebody, it's okay to ask, can you repeat yourself again? I beg your pardon, can you repeat what, what you said again? Um, again, we're not, we're not all in a coffee store or a hawker center to argue and yell everything left and right. Um, but also we all have times in our lives that we just need to move on. And sometimes we feel compelled to talk faster. I would say you have to be yourself, uh, but if you have been given feedback to slow down or speed up, mm. you just got to work on it. It doesn't happen overnight, just work on it. Mm. Yeah. Find the rhythm, right? Isn't yeah. it? Find the rhythm because some, some work environment prefer people to be very vocal and then they, I think they like maybe a lot of bloodshed. 
It's like I claw you, you claw me, and then they feel so good, you no, know, being clawed. And then I, wait, wait, just hang on, just I think just like everyone else, we don't we don't do this when we work together, okay? No, no, no. Not at Equinix, no, no, no. <laughs> not not at Thompson Robinson either. That was that was Yeah, not... that that I know, that I know, yeah, that I know. I think uh somehow everybody was very uh brave, right? <laughs> in a yes. very fast growth environment everybody just took a lot of risks and then make mistakes along the way but they adjust very quickly yeah. uh, which is good and um i think there is let's see is there a point yeah yeah i think there's also another question what are your considerations that you use to weigh uh, if you are asked you know if you would like to move to this role and overseas role you know Okay, good question. I always like these kind of questions. I always ask my candidates these questions. So, oh, Ken, um, the, the <laughs> yeah, uh, it's life and career is like a chess chessboard. It's a chess play, right? You want to think about the move after this. Mm. So, think about um, my considerations are what does this mean uh, in terms of a time horizon? Like, what does this mean in five years' time? Right. What does this mean to me in the role after and the role after that? All right. Uh, so to give a, to play back my real life example is that I was very happy to be in learning uh, and development. I was doing it for three years, and then opportunity presented itself to step into business planning uh, and operations. And I had to ask myself and the manager, what does this mean for the role after this? Where do I see myself going after? And so that's something you should certainly think about as well with every. Uh, role that you step into is about thinking about the role after that that you want to get into as well. Um, what if the role just, after that is doesn't exist in that company? Uh, it, again, it can be a diagonal move, you know, within the company uh, and so forth. But then, if you're if you answer your question, if there's nothing there, then you have to start uh, looking for that next step outside the company uh, mm. as well. So it's no, it's all, it takes a lot of bravery to step out of your current employment to find another job somewhere else when you've sort of hit, for lack of a better term, mm. the end of the road in this company, right? And right. Um, yeah. Mm, okay. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. What else? Um, I'm. I was trying to go to your uh, Equinix website and um, just wondering whether you can point us to the sorry to ask you here <laughs> uh, you know um yeah i was trying to look for the 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 value. I think it's about oh about okay nice 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 okay very nice oh careers and uh oh there's a lot oh gosh yeah, there's a lot there's a lot uh i think it's a, i think it's under about if i'm not wrong could be under about yeah if you scroll down oh, very nice very nice i'm i'm prepping the audience here so that after the <laughs> webinar they will be reaching out to you <laughs> uh if not i can always uh, send through the link after this as well mm -hmm. um it's somewhere ah, it's somewhere down there the... <laughs> yeah you gotta learn about our cultural values there you go i right, like that there. yes yes yeah. wow you are good you're good very nice yep so this is how we can so, so taking a look at this, right, social commitment, wow, this ties up very nicely with the community-minded uh, value. Um, mm -hmm. I think the, the good thing is, you know, can I just ask, do you use like assessment tools to suss out the individual values? Uh, we do have uh, a good old 360 feedback. Uh, okay. So we asked uh, a group of peers to make that happen. Um, that's or existing. Yeah, existing people. Um, we also have what we call magical mansions. Yeah. So we on our internal <clears throat> hub, you can uh, nominate someone and say, "Oh, Eileen, I, I you know, I want to thank her for being a energy mm. supplier." So you get when you go in your intranet and look up Eileen, it mm. will actually show your badge of honor and go like, "Eileen's been nominated like three, four times for this, this, and this." So people start racking up all this. Uh, mm. stuff uh no surprises our customer service team racks up the most magical mentions <laughs> ah, of course of course I see. yeah but what what about for somebody outside <laughs> externally coming in um so mm. we do ask questions like i like to throw out the phrases right which is i would say the statement like it says on the screen that uh, i'm safe i belong i matter i would ask questions yeah, like what does that mean to you what does that translate to you 
uh, and what things like that. So I would then segue into more deep mm. diving in, in your answers and your questions and things like that. Uh, but there are also situational questions that we have on hand to ask our candidates about things like that to demonstrate, you know, being a positive mindset, um, growth mindset, mm. uh, things like that. Yeah. I like this one as well. This one, physical, yes. mental, emotional well-being. I think uh, if I were to go, if I were to plan, you know, before I, I go for an interview with you, uh, I may want to catch your attention, right? Like you can read a little bit about me, maybe in some of the activities that I participate in, some of the communities I support, maybe some of the posts that I, you know, that I, I launch or or dish out on, on LinkedIn or comments that I make on LinkedIn as well. So as to catch your attention, then you see me in action, right? Is that possibly one of the ways if you happen to stumble on my, stumble upon my, my post in social media, would that actually help? Yes, I mean, I'm sure there is a level of that plays a role. Uh, it plays some um, waiting on it. Um, okay. Again, depend, different interviewing managers and hiring managers have played different Portion, uh, yeah. Yeah, portions on it. For me, yeah. I would I would look at it as a lens of who you are and what you are. But genuinely the questions and how you answer them and how you how we have a conversation is the most important part because working is all about conversations and communicating as well. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I really like this uh digital inclusion. That's that's so good. Mm. Very, very good here. Yeah. So, wow, nice. This is a bonus. We didn't plan this. <laughs> <laughs> did not plan it. Hey, what do you mean? This is all not planned. What are you on about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's great. There is a question in the chat. Okay. It, uh, how do you evaluate a candidate has potential? I would... How do I evaluate if the person, if the candidate yeah. has potential? Um, so, this, this is a very kind of... I've seen this question come up and I've heard it answered in many different ways. Is it okay. potential for right fit, potential to do the job, potential for growth, right? As, as I've also kind of mentioned that already. Um, how do you evaluate it is just through the questions that we ask, you know, again, to me, it's all about the interaction and the conversation you and I have. Um, I I, some people are very quick, like some individuals know very quickly whether this person's genuine and authentic. Uh, and then some other people that I know of takes them like three meetings to really uncover what that candidate is like, right? Mm. Um, so it's really up to the individual to, to kind of go from there. To me, the question that you should be asking um, the interviewer or interviewers through the interview session is just check, check in. Like, how am I doing so far? Are you getting the question, the answers that you're looking for? Is it too detailed? Is it too summary, summarized? Mm. Have, I, have you heard the answers that you're looking for from me? Do I need to expand upon certain areas, things like that? And I would do that um, halfway through, things like that, um, just to get a gauge of how you're doing. And that will give, that puts you, you know, makes you vulnerable in a very vulnerable position already, mm. uh, just to go through that, uh, process as well. Wow, there's a lot of that social intelligence being played out here, <laughs> right? Halfway through the session, you just want to check in, yes. right? Where, yeah. where are we? Are we in tandem or go on yeah. different divergent paths? <laughs> wow, yeah. Um, the um, yes. So DEI, right? Diversity and inclusion, uh, is touted by many businesses as an important trait. And so how deeply entrenched or demonstrated is this within Equinix? Oh, right from the top. I was very surprised. I thought it would be another company that just talks a talk, yeah. uh, but it right comes in. right from the top. Oh. Um, our, our CEO, our leadership team, they all walk the walk uh, and mm. come in to do it. So the statement of I'm safe, I matter, I belong, is actually the CEO's... Um, mm sentence and how he operates, his values, uh, even before he became CEO, because he was part of the company beforehand. And that really makes everyone in this firm, that employees and colleagues, 
feel very, very safe to say, speak their mind, speak up and bring out these diverse ideas that would have been naturally been bottled up to go like, oh, that's too crazy. I won't say that. But wow. you throw it out there. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's definitely a very safe, it makes you feel very safe on a day-to-day -day basis as well. Uh, yeah. Not just in speaking up, but also in whatever, um, in terms of your religion, your beliefs, your um, preferences, and things like that. It doesn't matter. Mm. Yeah, I think uh, I think this is this is definitely also part of the ESI index, right? So ESG, yeah. ESG, ESG, yeah. ESG. Yeah. Um, but ours, ours is very, very transparent. Very transparent. And you talk to anyone, my colleagues out there, it's it's genuine. And we actually use it. We use these values like during our meetings, like track. Yeah, like we we go like, hey, that's not within the company values. You know, things like that. You're not thinking about ourselves, yourself only. And so we challenge each other in that way, and then we call each other out in a positive way to go like, you know, I think you can, we can all do better, think about it more broad, broadly, things like that, and just working Gosh. in a more that is very forward thinking. Yeah, yeah, it has its ups. And certainly a lot of areas to work on as well. It's not perfect, but there's certainly a lot more uh, transparent areas to work on. How to make your values so obvious that others in a conservative culture uh, like Singapore can see? It's a, I, think, I don't think there's any way to put yourself out there other than being yourself. Uh, what I mean by being yourself is being authentic to who you are, right? And as Eileen has, or I think the kind of takeaway from me in hearing Eileen open up this session beforehand is that Courage. You, are, you are who you are, right? Mm -hmm. There's nothing going to change that. I am who I am. Eileen is who she is, you know, uh, things like that. And there is no other way to showcase who you are other than being yourself. Uh, if you want to stand out uh, in, a, in a crowded place, it's to me it's all about just being yourself i can hear the the loudest person in the office yell 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 talk 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 mm. because i know that's who that person is but then i also know everyone else's traits and values is what makes them who they are um like i said it's really i can empathize as well because i've been on the other end of applying for jobs it's hard to make yourself jump off linkedin or a cv or a resume right mm. um it's things like that that you have to build a network, leverage your relationships with people in uh, understanding who you are and then knowing where to guide you into a company that fits you and who you are as well mm. and things like that. Mm. Um, other than that, that's really what I've kind of like gone with is just to be who I am because... At the end of the day, a job's a job. You can give it to anyone. You can train them to do the job. Uh, but whether they are happy or fit in, it's not going to be the long term. Like Eileen's example of her customer becoming the yeller after five months. That's not who he is, right? That yeah. person Sorry. will resign. Yeah. Um, so that's that's really my, my takeaway advice. Uh, and the last statement I'll make is that if you are shortlisted for an interview, it's mm. because we believe that you can do the job already. Mm. Then the question it just becomes how you fit culturally and how you be a cultural addition to the company or the team right now. And so if you understand the company's values, that's a great start. And then through the interview process as well, when they go, have you got any questions or have opportunity to ask, is to ask that question of how do you see me being a cultural addition to this team. Wow, right. cultural yeah. addition, wow. Yes. <laughs> that is strong. Is that a tagline you have been working on? I think so. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's something that I've come across and go like, we're trying to diverse it. So it's always an addition rather than a fit. A fit means exclusion as well. Mm. Yeah. Heart yes. first, soft bonus. <laughs> what does that mean by heart first, soft bonus? <laughs> heart skill first. Uh, yeah, then with the soft skill is a bonus to keep the balance, pick me, right? Offer me the job, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I think uh, what's the book? 
I mean, I got an additional bonus, right? <laughs> so I, I didn't expect uh, Dominic to share the openings that uh, Equinix has, especially in Singapore. And knowing mm-hmm. that Equinix has regional footprint, plus they are growing like mad. Come on, data centers are growing like mad. So, um, so, so I think this, you are really in a growth sector. There's lots of opportunities. Um, Dominic, you understood the journey of uh, professionals as they transition right, throughout their career. Yeah, thanks for being so open. Thanks for being so open. Thanks for being so brave to come on as well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I hope to catch up with you, but I do encourage everyone. I hope you're okay for everybody to kind of link up with you in LinkedIn. Sure. And, um, yeah, maybe even uh, connect with you and see if you can um, guess their values. <laughs> 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 well, I'm, I'm more. I actually want to meet the person that keep or the people that keep saying I'm not sure none of the above. I'm not sure none of the above. Oh, you want to meet them? Oh, so yeah. cute. Oh, this is so authentic. That's good. Hey, yeah. everybody, just take him on, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very well, nice. Okay, thank you so much, Dominic. Thank you so Karen, much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me on, Eileen. Uh, and yeah. everything that Eileen said. Uh, feel free to reach out anytime. Yay. If not, happy Friday, have a nice weekend, and uh, maybe I'll see you next time in Singapore as well. I think.